fellow speaker on this morning, one that we are not ashamed to bring before you, Bishop Smith, one that is well able and capable to bring unto us the word of life. We want to receive him by saying, send the word. Send the word. Bishop Smith. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you glad to be here in the middle? Well, yeah. <laughs> Amen. I have enjoyed myself. Yes. Amen. These last two days. And also today with the worship service. Amen. Two, Wednesday, Tuesday night we had the preacher preaching about compassion. Amen. Bishop. Keith and preached about compassion. Yeah. Amen. And yes. We need that. Yeah. You got to have a compassionate heart. Right. Right. And then our assistant, Josiah, preached on yesterday. Amen. A pure mind. Yeah. I could listen to that kind of preaching all day yeah. and all night. Right. <laughs> Amen. All right. We're not going to attempt, try, to bring anything new. All of this you've already heard. Because, amen, all we do is preach the word. And the word has been around a long time. Amen. 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 But we put you in remembrance. Amen. Of these things. So that do, they do not escape or slip. As the Bible said, we don't let them slip. Amen. We hold fast, steadfast to God's word because that's the only thing that's going to amen, help us. That's the only thing that's going to amen, deliver us. Amen, is the word of God. Amen, I want you to take your Bibles in your hand and we're going to look at again in the book of Hebrews Amen. It, just for the sake of uh, having a text for this Bible class, I want to talk about strong meat, right. removing the veil. All right. Amen. Removing the veil. We know Jesus already rent the veil. Amen. When he was on the cross, the veil was rent and twain and therefore now we have access into the presence of God and we know that God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness so that amen we can ascertain everything he want us to to have here in the book of Hebrews in chapter number nine amen uh, I'm going to read I'm going to read, amen, a uh, uh, few scriptures here. It says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service and a world of sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein were the candlesticks, the table, and the shoe brick, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, a tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had a golden censer, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was a golden pot that had manna, aaron rod that budded, and the table of the covenants. Now all three of those things was rejected by man. They rejected God's divine provision. They rejected God's, amen, divine leadership. And they also rejected God's divine word. And God took put those three things as symbols and type of man's rejection of him into the heart of the ark and then covered it with the mercy seat. And the mercy seat was sprinkled with blood. Amen, signifying 
God had put these things out of his sight. The verse 5 says, and, o and over it the cherubim of glory shattering the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the services of God. But into the second went the high priest, along once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost then signifying that the way into the holiness of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was standing. It was not possible for man to get in God's presence at this time because God had to do something that only he could do. Amen. Man could not bring himself or redeem himself or fix himself in any kind of way to get back into God's presence. Now, it says here in verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifice that could not make him that did the service perfect a hold, amen, as pertaining to the conscience. Now, that's, that was the problem. The problem was the conscience. St. Paul says the law was good, holy, just, and righteous. Amen. Because it came from God. And whatever comes from God is good, righteous, and holy. The problem was on our end. But we was, he said we were carnal, soul under sin. And because of that, amen, it kept us out of the presence of God, the way he, amen, purposed and intended for man to live and to be. Amen. God never intended for us, amen, to be afar from him. The whole purpose, amen, when he created man in the Garden of Eden, was that he would, amen, live in us that his will would be done, amen, on the earth, through us, made in his image and in his likeness. We know the problem that, amen, prevailed at that time. Now, the Holy Ghost signifying that the will of the holiness of all was not yet made perfect or manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. Therefore, amen, something had to happen. So I just want to go over here and read a couple of more scriptures for you in uh, Hebrews chapter number 10. Amen. It's going to take us where we are trying to get to. It says, therefore, Hebrews 10 and 19, he says, Therefore, having brother boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. In other words, Jesus had to come into the world. Amen. And in order to redeem man, he had to come into the world as a man himself. Amen. The Bible says that, and I think it's uh, Romans chapter number 8 and verses number 3. Amen. God said, well, let's, let me go there and read. Amen. Uh, Romans 8 and 3. I'm going to take our time here. Amen. <clears throat> Romans 8 and 3. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak, through the flesh. Now I want to stop right there and talk about that word flesh for a minute. 